apparently, when the Americans first went to space, they wanted a pen that would write in space. Now, these are sort of completely plucked out the sky figures, but they just give you an idea of the order of magnitude. They spent millions of dollars developing one, and each pen was about $10,000 to make. When the Russians went to space, of course, they had exactly the same problem, and what they did was they took a pencil. Now, these really illustrate the two ways of approaching any engineering project. One is to focus on the engineering and the beauty of the engineering and hang the price. And the other is to think about the market that you actually want to sell it in. And this will very much dictate what it is you're looking at and what kind of ways you're looking at making it. Now, I have an interest in making a CVT for a bicycle. And if you look at the price of bicycle gear, you'll find that the derailleur set is round about £20, and the gear cluster again is round about £20. So we need to be thinking, if we're thinking of a mass market bicycle CVT, of a cost of production of round about £40. Actually, that'd be cost of sale. The budget that we've got in order to create any device that we hope might be a mass market device is peanuts. And that's because it won't bring a huge amount of efficiency increase. An efficiency increase per dollar will be ridiculously low. So a very expensive, beautifully engineered CVT that brings a 3% increase in efficiency, it's going to be bragging rights on the it's not really going to be worth it in those terms. And sure, some people will buy it, but it will never dominate the market because it doesn't bring enough return for the cost. You'll not sell it to average Joe who thinks about the price. There is something that even if it gives a small reduction in efficiency, cuts the cost. And it's going to be really interesting to folk. It's one of the reasons I was actually interested in this. Of course, what this is, is a mechanical rectifier that we made in video 2382. What's important about a mechanical rectifier, as far as I'm concerned on this particular project, is it's a key to a lot of CVT types that you see. When you see them in gear types, they usually rely heavily on mechanical rectification. And of course, this thing can be made out of pressed steel plates that you drill out and off the shelf gears. So it's really going to be very cheap to be able to manufacture something like that. Now, of course, the issue we've got with that, because what this does is turns this linear motion into rotary motion, depending on how far that rack, that rack actually moves. So we've got a variable linear motion will vary the output motion. What we need to do is take an input motion and change it to linear and make it variable. And this is what I came up with. Now it's quite large because of course it's a prototype and we're working out ideas, but if we take those bits and print them off, then we get this. And we set this up in exactly the same way as we did in video 2382. And what that means is putting the pegs in and putting the gears in place. So that it's like that. Now that one is gonna be our output gear. Awesome. So <laughs> the long end sticks out. We pop those gears back in place. Then we take, there we are, that. Then we take this bit, which is the rack, and it's got a long side and a short side to that pin. The short side of that pin slots in the groove like that, and then we can put the centre plate on, and the centre plate is this plate here, with these ridges facing upwards. Right, now we need to make a crank, and we do that with this bit and this bit, that goes on there. Then the top goes on, line up the two axles and glue it in place. When that crank is glued, it slots in there and the fork slots over that section there. So when we turn that crank, of course, it will move this backwards and forwards as long as there's a pivot point here. That pivot point is made out of a bit of rod and we can move that pivot point up and down. And as we move the pivot point up and down, the throw is changed to being a slower throw when it's down there and a greater throw when it's up there. So we're now we're ready to put the top on and put a peg in the centre. Right, this is it more or less complete. The output gear is here on the grey side and the input gear is here on the blue side. So this is where the power will come in 
and this is where the power will go out. So the only thing we've got to have to do is put that selector pin in. For the selector pin, we've got a slide and an actual pin. The slide goes in here like that, and then you feed the pin in, and then making sure that it passes through the arm and into that bottom section that we saw before, glue it in place once it's in place. <laughs> There it is complete. Right, I've put a dot on it here where we've got the input and I've put a dot on the output. The selector arm is there. If I turn that input one full turn, there we go, we move that dot a tiny little bit. Now let's bung that right the way up and do exactly the same thing. Look how much further it moves for one full turn. That's absolutely awesome. So what we've got there is a CVT. Okay. I think that's pretty awesome because not only will that be cheap to make, of course, it's extremely lightweight. I mean, when you're thinking of a bicycle, you don't want to put several stones on a bicycle. You want something that's going to be lightweight as well. So, in principle, remember, this is proof of concept. In principle, that works really well. This sliding gear that we use to do that rectification is actually a really robust mechanism. It's used quite a lot and it, and it lasts a long time. So, it's a really interesting mechanism, I think, for creating that CVT that I've been looking for for quite a while. Now, of course, like anything, I mean, it's a prototype and so there are issues, but the issues may not be immediately obvious. If your first thought is, well, there's lots of sliding interfaces, so it's going to be friction, then think again, that's not actually the issue. That's really easy to solve. The real issue is actually hidden in this bit. This actually is one of the issues with design. This is actually called a Whitworth mechanism. If I put the pivot there, then what it'll do is move quickly around that section, and as it goes to the bottom here, then it'll move slowly around that section, and it's used as a quick return in things like shaping machines. So the output here actually won't be even because it's got a variability in the motion. Now, of course, to improve something like that, what you'd be looking at, maybe, is that variable scotch yoke mechanism. In video 2368, and you might wonder, well, why would I use a Whitworth mechanism when I know it's an issue? Why not just go straight ahead and build the scotch yoke version? Well, this is another thing about designing stuff. Actually, I don't know it's an issue. I think it would be, it might be. The Scotch York mechanism is a bit more complicated than the Whitworth mechanism, but maybe when you're cycling, actually you just wouldn't notice it. It would make no difference at all to you. Uh, and that's where modeling and thinking about issues comes to a point where you actually have to test it. You have to try it and see. Because maybe some of the issues you think are issues in real life aren't issues. And so, you make a decision somewhere along the line of where you want to test it when you think you've got something that might be a bit of a winner. So the next thing really to do with this is to make a more permanent model of it and, you know, something in metal and try it and see if that slight gap, that change in speed of motion is actually a problem rather than just a problem I'm imagining. And I, I don't know if it's true or not, but it is the point at which I would decide that. And of course, everybody decides something different when they're designing something. And that's why I chose to do it this way instead of the Scotch Yoke way. Of course, if you want to play around with it, you might try the Scotch Yoke mechanism, you might try other mechanisms. You're more than welcome to. And of course, these files will be on Thingiverse for anybody who wants to try it. I mean, it is a square and I would probably make it circular and shrink everything down a little bit. But the essence of what I'm thinking of is right here in this CVT model based on the sliding gear and the Whitworth mechanism. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching and please do remember to like and subscribe.